Okay, so I'm going to walk you through the pre-lab for the Can You Make Two Grams of a Compound Lab. Today in class, you should have received a reaction pair that has two reactant materials. So I'm going to walk you through an example with another reaction pair of what you should be doing in preparation for Wednesday and Thursday's lab. So there are three steps we need to go through. Step number one is to write a balanced equation for the reaction. So as you can see, you are given a reaction pair containing two reactant substances. And by knowing the reactants that we have, knowing that this is a double replacement reaction, hopefully remembering the information from chapter 11, you should be able to predict the products that are going to be formed. Now the trick in this reaction is that for the first time, we have a hydrate as part of a reactant substance. So I'll show you what to do with that. With your reactants, the first thing you want to do is write the formulas. Okay, so we have to first take a look at what are the formulas for the substances that we have. So if we remember, barium forms a 2 plus charge, chloride forms a minus 1 charge, and we have here barium chloride dihydrate. The di just uses the prefixes that we've learned before. So we learned that di meant 2. Hydrate represents water, so this is just two waters. So this whole thing is one gigantic compound that's going to be kept together, and that's one of the substances you'll get to start this reaction. Then we have our silver nitrate. Silver is one of those weird transition metals that's an exception to the rule. Silver is plus one, and nitrate is NO3 minus. So now that we have our starting substances and the ions, we can put this together into a balanced chemical equation. So if we take a look. Barium's 2 plus, chloride's 1 minus. So we're first going to have BaCl2. We need two of them to balance out charges. Then we put this little dot here to indicate that a hydrate is bonded to it. It's not a multiplication symbol, so just be careful of that. Then we take a look at our other reactant, silver nitrate. And now we want to predict our products. So this is a double replacement reaction. In a double replacement reaction, the ions we can think about the cations exchanging places. So barium is going to trade place with silver. So now we're going to form barium nitrate. And notice how I balance it as I write it. Plus silver chloride. And then the hydrate part that we saw, that's just going to come out and be a kind of a separate third product. Okay, I don't have to worry about balancing it. I had two that went in. I'm going to have two that come out. Now I have to go back through and balance the whole thing. So I have one barium and two chlorides on my reactant side. So I need to go over and put the number two in front of silver chloride on the product side to balance that. Now I have two silvers, so I go back to the reactant side. Two silver nitrates. That's okay because two nitrates, two nitrates on either side. The equation is nice and balanced. Now that we have a balanced chemical equation, we've identified our reactant substances, our product substances. Now we have to take a look at filling in the states of matter. So that's step number two. So in step number two, we need to predict which compound will form a precipitate. When we used double replacement reactions before, we took a look at a table of solubility rules. So you should still have this on your reference sheet. So if we take a look at what we have down below in the equation, the substances that you're going to start with, I'm actually going to give you solid forms of the reactants. You're going to dissolve them in water. So your starting materials will be aqueous because you will have dissolved them in water. So what we're interested in looking at are our products. Obviously, we know water is a liquid in this case. And if we look at the solubility rules, the nitrate, so barium nitrate, nitrates are soluble, so that will be aqueous. And chlorides are 
soluble except those with silver, mercury, and lead. And so in this case, since we have chloride with silver, chloride with silver means this one's going to be our solid precipitate. Remember, precipitate means that we've put two solutions together and there's a strong attraction between those ions so that solid now falls out of solution. It no longer remains dissolved in the water. It's insoluble. So I've now identified that this is my insoluble precipitate. This is what I'm going to be making two grams of. That's the goal of this lab. So whatever you identify as being the solid, insoluble, it seems weird to say that, but yes, the solid, insoluble precipitate, you're going to make two grams of that. So now we have to do our calculations. So step three. Step three, we want to do our mass-to-mass -mass calculations that we've been doing. So once again, here's our equation that we've identified. We've isolated that our silver chloride, in this example, is going to be the solid precipitate. So I need to make two grams of silver chloride. Now, what am I going to be starting with? Well, I'll look at the reactant side of the equation. Those two reactants that you have, barium chloride dihydrate and silver nitrate, those are the two chemicals I would be handing you if this was the exact reaction you were doing. So the two reactant pairs that you have on the label you received today, those are the two solid chemicals I'm going to hand you, and you have to figure out what mass of those substances you need to weigh out. So this is just going to be a mass-to-mass -mass conversion problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take two grams of silver chloride, and now I'm going to do my mass-to-mass -mass conversion. We go mass to mole using molar mass of silver chloride. Nothing fancy, just calculate it based off of the periodic table. Mole to mole using the mole ratio that we've been doing. So first I'm going to choose to convert it to my first reactant, barium chloride dihydrate. And notice barium chloride dihydrate, they're not two separate things, it's one big compound. A hydrate, if you remember, is when we had water stuck into the crystalline structure of the barium chloride. We did an example lab last semester where you took copper sulfate pentahydrate. It was a blue crystal. You evaporated off the water, and it turned into this white powder. So you've seen hydrates before. So now, I've gone again, I've gone from mass to mole, mole to mole, and now when I go from mole to mass of the barium chloride dihydrate, my mass is going to seem really large to you because I need to make sure that I include not just the mass of barium and two chlorines, but I also have to include the mass of two waters. So depending on how many waters you have, depending on how many hydrates you have in your compound, make sure you include that mass. So if you see this, this mass ends up being 244. 0 .20 for this substance, which is a pretty large number, right? And this ends up being 1.70 grams of barium chloride dihydrate. So that means if I were to do this reaction, I would need to weigh out exactly 1.70 grams of my first reactant. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing. I still want 2 grams of my product. But now I'm going to convert it into my other reactant substance, mass to mole. So my other reactant is silver chloride. That's over. Yeah. Silver chloride is my product. So first step looks the same. Now you have mole to mole. So this time I'm going from silver chloride to moles of silver nitrate. And this one's not a hydrate, so pretty straightforward mass. One mole of silver nitrate. Again, the mass of one silver, one nitrate, three oxygens, 169.9. And you really want to be as specific as possible. Okay, I know you always like to round, but this is going to be very precise. And so we want to get our calculations as close and true as possible. Right, so when you're calculating your molar masses, you know I like at least one decimal place. 
So now I'm done. I've calculated the mass of each reactant that I would need to make two grams of my product. And this is what I would actually do. So if you can see in summary, with the reaction pair that you were given, write the balanced equation, predict which compound will form the precipitate, calculate the mass of each reactant needed to make two grams of the product. And then you're not gonna be allowed to do the lab until you and your lab partner understand the math and agree on the amounts of each reactant that you need. So hopefully this helped and we'll see you in class.